Welcome everyone to our next video about Yocto project training. In the previous video, we learned about Yocto build directory structure and configuration variables. In this video, we are going to learn about bit big execution tasks and how to define dependency in the recipe. As we all know that BitPig is just a task scheduler, but how does it work? So I'm going to explain to you in very easy terminology. First, BitPig first step is to parse the metadata. Metadata is instruction set for BitPig. It parses the metadata and then after parsing the metadata, BitPig prepares a task list and then executes those tasks which are in the task list. It can execute tasks in parallel or sequential order. It totally depends on the dependency graph of the, those tasks. So as we are talking about tasks in Bitfake, so I will explain many types of tasks in the Bitfake. There are different types of tasks in Bitfake. Some are shown in this slide and I can give you a brief overview. What's the purpose of the Bitfake tasks? As you can see, the first two fetch tasks, as the name suggests, it fetches the packages, names, sources, anything required for building a recipe. Then the two unpack task, it unpacks the packages which was fetched in the two fetch task. Then two configure task configures the recipe image and then do compile task compiles the recipe image. So you can, def these are the different tasks in the BitPig. And the last two deploy task will deploy your recipe image in the deploy folder. But there are many other tasks other than these. These are the most famous tasks in BitPig task list. You can define what needs to be done a recipe in the fetch, what you need wants to fetch it, and then you what you want to configure it or compile it at after compilation, where you want to deploy your image in this task list. The, similarly for cleaning, there are multiple tasks. Three are mentioned here. For example, if you want to clean your recipe, to clean task is the most simple one. You can define here what you want to do. And clean share state is the more strong clean where you also clean the share state cache and the more strongest is the clean all where you also other than share state cache cleaning the recipe you also clean all the downloaded source files i just told you these are the tasks but when you are writing a recipe you write this to compile and then you write your compilation steps of the recipe to deploy then where you want to deploy you write that the recipe instructions there. So you we will see that when you we will write a recipe that these tasks are used in bit big. Other than that, there is one more important thing that there are many command options for bit big. For example, if you want to execute the specific task, you can use the dash c option. Uh, if you write bit big dash c menu config in the virtual kernel so what will be like this so you write the bit big then there is a command option there c then you write the task which is here menu config then the recipe similarly you write bit big there c it means okay i'm going to execute this task here it's compiled that comes as like to compile and then the recipe so compilation task of the virtual kernel will run but there is one important thing here this task will execute but all the previous tasks before compile will execute first so all the tasks until compile task will execute here similarly there is a dash f option where you can forcefully run a specific task for example here you can write dash f forcefully dash c run this task for this recipe this will ensure that your task is even run when it was not even required to run. Like sometimes you don't have any change and you run the DC compile virtual kernel, it will not run it because it says there is no change, there is no point of running it. But if you forcefully want to run it, then you have to pass dash f command. 
dash b command is used for executing task of the specific recipe and dash e for getting the environment there is one more important command option dash g which you can use to generate dependency graph like dash bit big dash g compile virtual kernel will generate the dependency graph of this task of the recipe virtual slash kernel there are some common variables which you will see in recipe like pn pv and pr what are those variables those variables are just uh, acronym of package name package version and package release and they are used for simplify the recipe for example if there is a package name iperf and package version in 1.0.4 and then in the later all the places in the recipe you can just simply use pn and pv so it's just for simplification don't get confused when you see this variable these are just like names of package name and package release now moving on to dependency recipes can have dependency during the build time or at runtime but how you define it you reflect this you have to write this in the recipe and for that there are different variables are used two variables are here shown depends uh, and are depends depends variable contains the list of re recipe which your recipe has build time dependency so list of recipes if you have a de dependency build time depends on recipes that depends variable contain its name or list of all the dependency while our depends contains list of the package which are a runtime dependency so all the packages which your recipe has a runtime dependency it will r depends this variable will contain for example depends equal to recipe dash b means the local to configure task because it's a depends variable is the build time dependency task list so your to configure task of your recipe local it will depend on the to populate sysroot which is like almost the last task of recipe dash b so once it is done then your to configure task will execute and if you have r depends like some package name dependency then your local to build task where you are building it it will depend on the to package write task so once this task is done then your this task will be to build task of your local recipe will be executed so you can just write similarly just add dependency and in your recipe so your recipe will be executed after those dependent recipes like sometimes you need something before you want to compile it so you can say okay compile this recipe after compiling all these recipes so you can add it in the depends variable like sometimes a recipe can have also dependency on a specific version of another recipe and bitpick allows to reflect this by using equal to greater than equal to less than equal to simply greater than or less than and you can just simply write like as shown in the slide depends equal to recipe dash b and then you put like if the recipe dash b is greater than equal to 1.2 and it has dependency if the recipe b is greater than equal to this then it has a runtime dependency and these are the normal operators which are supported in the bit big so you can also define the version while adding the dependency it is useful when you have like dependency on a specific recipe version and also like sometimes it's very complex to understand the dependency graph so there are some tools available like ncurses home naughty which you can just run the command bit big dash g dash u and then you write your recipe and then you use okay this tool like this tool will show you all your dependency graph so now like i am going to summarize what we have learned until now that bitpick is a cross compilation tool which resolves inter package dependency and you can compile it for different target distribution and there are different build systems you can write to many things with it and it's for different variety of architecture you can exploit parallelism as we saw one of the videos you can run parallel threads and like those, you can run threads in or task in parallel which does not have any dependency because of the layer structure you can easily use and extend this so what's next our next goal is that we studied all this uh, theoretical knowledge about bitpick jokto project and our next aim should be to write a simple recipe 
and try to compile it. So from our next video, our target will be to use our knowledge to write recipe. We will start very simple recipe, maybe a very small recipe, and then we'll see where we go from the after compiling that recipe. So I am hopeful to see you guys in our practical example videos. Thanks for staying with us. Thank you.